Yo, 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 and welcome back to Creeps and Crimes. Podcast. I'm Taylor. I'm Banshee. Oh, I'm Iron Mike. And I'm Banshee. And, and happy St. Patrick's Day 2024. 4.0. Can't and even believe it. Possibly the last. And possibly the last. We yeah. decided today, this morning, that it, this very well could be our last one. We'll have to pick a new holiday. Yeah, we. We. Um, I'm sorry if you're watching on YouTube. I have to stand up really quickly because I forgot we messed up our lights. There we go. We um, were in the dark there. For a yeah, second. we were in the dark for a sec. Um, so we we realized that we're running out of St. Patty's Day cases. Yeah, like we're we're running dry. We, and that's what we get for doing the bulkies. But I think what will be fun is just creepy accounts getting fucked up and still wearing. The yeah, so that's stuff. what we'll do. So in the future, if we ever get to the point where we run out, we'll do creepy accounts with a uh, you know still the Irish music. We'll get fucked up. You know, we'll do the thing. We got. Look at me oh god <laughs> no 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 we got our jameson ginger lime this is number two slancha we recorded an entire 25 minute intro yep and then we had to stop we had to delete it we had to delete it we had to go back because we sounded like the most fucking privileged vain motherfuckers like that you've ever heard of in your life we we're like what are we even doing we we were just talking about lip filler but we just realized like that's just this is not the time this is not this is saint Patty's this is saint patty's day. day this is not the time and we sound like bitches yeah, we sound like was, privileged white bitches which which we are we are and <laughs> that is and it's you know you gotta stop. We're not it going back down that train. We're so not anyway, doing it. We finished a drink the last intro, and these are like like triple shot Jameson <laughs> ginger limes. We just finished, and the we're bottle. lightweights. Yeah, fuck. like we're hardcore. so hardcore because we just don't drink these days. Yeah, not well not recently. These days. We're, we're king girls. But you know what? One eighty one, one eighty two. No, one eighty two. We're drinking. That's two days a week on a nine day stretch. I can't, Morgan. We're about to be drinking for four days straight next week. Well, that's a different story. No, but we got to do it. You know what we'll have? We'll have like um. A, a cocktail. Ju- you, yeah, cocktail. One cocktail. One we just cocktail. need one. We don't need to get like fucked up. We need a drink. You yes. know what I mean? Okay. Like we we got to get our baseline correct. I'll have a dirty teen. I will not. You will have a gin drink. I'll have a gin and tonic. Y- you'll have a gin and tonic. I'll Perfect. get fever tree tonic. Absolutely. That's what. We'll, that's what's gonna. <laughs> that's what's gonna happen. The ginger in our drinks is like straight fucking ginger. The heartburn burning feel our throats as it goes down. Yeah, it's she's a rough day. Yeah. So. And if you're wondering, I we told you last year, but we deleted it. I'm in full fucking glam. I had a bridal trial today, yes. so you'll never catch my face looking this way except for on 420, baby. Yeah, except for on 420, baby. Not because we're going to be blazing it. Well. But we will be getting married. We but not, be, but not me and Morgan. We will be getting married. Me and Morgan will be getting married. <laughs> <laughs> and I still don't have a ring on my finger. <laughs> and you still don't have a dress. And I still don't have a dress. We'll get that the week. But before. you know what? Uh, did you? Was it you that sent me that one the other day? I Should I get that get one? Because that one's stunning. I love I the neckline so on it. Yes. I think it'll make my titties look great. I think it'll be gorgeous. <laughs> yeah, I think that. Yes, look I agree. I think. I think let's order it. Let's see, and then yeah. We'll if I hate it, then I'll order another one. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's the one. Yeah, I, I, we've said it in passing on the podcast prior, but just so everyone knows, I'm the only bridesmaid that does not have a dress yet. That's my girl. But I just don't know. But if, it was, if we were both in the wedding, we'd both not have a dress. So... <laughs> <laughs> like if this was not my wedding I would not also I would also not have a dress yeah you know that's just how until it goes. a week before that's just how it, that's how we but roll. you know what me and Morgan know that we're gonna take care of it we are my bachelorette in a week and a half and we have no outfits <laughs> we're supposed to do it tonight not gonna happen definitely not can you guys imagine what we would order drunk no i don't actually i bet the fits could be pretty cool you know what we maybe but just should there's no there's if we no finish way. this in time we should there's no we but, should not do this drunk I think we could get some fire fits. <laughs> I think we. The, I think we'll order the sizings like, would be off. One hundred percent. Yeah, the sizings would be off. That's that's how they get us these days. Yeah, you know these fucking eyelashes need to go off. Oh yeah, I forgot you didn't take them. Off. No, because this is how long you're gonna be wearing them. Oh, you got to get unless you want to go get extensions. Uh. Uh-uh. I mean, they're easier for me personally. I can stomach extensions better than I can a lash line. Or you can do the the parcels if. You, Parcels of land. Would you like to buy a parcel of land, please? Sure, Lord. What are they Make called? Me Lord Mounts. <laughs> Lord Mounts. Um, no, I can't Lord believe Harris. Are you fucking so kidding me? Soon. How many? Are, like forty days. Forty days. Yeah. I still don't have to. <laughs> <laughs> I have so many things I have to do and yeah. I'm just ignoring it. I'm hoping that someone's going to do it. You know what? I'm we like, will. Mom, no, but but you, we'll get shit done. Are you kidding me? That that week of, can, do you know where That's we're That's why be? we canceled we'll the podcast. all around Knoxville. Canceled. We didn't cancel the podcast. Car- 
podcast the, ends. The podcast is going to be like all the recordings and everything that's going to be needed to be done is going to be done a week and a half prior. Well, actually, it's technically two weeks, but like me editing is yeah. going to be a week and a half prior. And my goal is to have and listen, I don't want to fucking hear about it if you hear a breath or something. We'll do the five minute intros Okay I'll let you have that We'll do the five minute intros Because honestly God We're gonna run out of shit to say Because we're gonna be doing So many back to back recordings Yeah That's fine But like There's gonna be a lot That are not gonna end up Being edited Because my priority The the week and a half out Is gonna be the wedding Just so we're all clear here I love that for me See this is why I'm not stressing Yeah Because I have Taylor That will do it for me <laughs> I will literally do She'll it She'll wanna kill me But I'll be like I love you so no, much No because I won't wanna kill you How's your speech coming? Um, It's done Is i wrote it? it like three months ago and i just keep going back and editing with like things that we experience and things that Can go you on read a little snippet to me right now do you want me to give you the intro yes okay here's how ah! i'm gonna start it off okay i'm gonna say hey everybody thanks so much for coming out da, 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 da. you know that little d- the basic opening and then yes. i'm gonna introduce myself i'm gonna say hey everybody my name's taylor if you don't know who i am this might help a little bit yo 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 and welcome back <laughs> To creeps and crimes you Podcast have say, You have to say that all the way Well that's why I, I Podcast Do you not remember me Asking if I could get the MC's number So I could um, text and see If I could get a second mic <laughs> That's for you bitch Not a whole live show That at one's the for you um, Yeah that's all you can have Oh can I, what about the ending Um, Maybe a week closer Give me the ending Well I, I wrote the one with you Actually in the car I We were talking And I wrote it That night When I went up To the hotel room After we were, were hanging we? out In Washington PA Oh You were in your fields uh, huh? I fixed One piece of it That needed to be fixed Because I have An entire section For Aaron Like I'm not just Only no, giving I don't a speech even know For what you, you to say to Aaron. No Aaron's is really Really <laughs> sweet Like it is Aww. Truly like Really kind What I, I gave him Of course I had to Give him a fucking Hard time a She few just times. wants Aaron's mom To love on her <laughs> I mean obviously Moms <laughs> are like Literally my favorite Thing to have Obsessed with me But you know The, the piece I have For Aaron is I said it to you so I could say it on the podcast was like I couldn't imagine a another best friend for my husband and husband for my best friend. And that's like the basis of his oh, piece of the speech. Cute. And so like his entire and uh, I can't I'll even cry. Con- I literally can't. I'll cry. I can't even continue on. And I, I want the whole speech. I keep having to practice it so that way I won't cry. I started my vows and they're so you, hard. You can't. It's the hardest thing in the world. It's like when I cover a case that's really hard on me, like I have to read it 500 like times. Like how like truly though, how am I supposed to wrap up fucking 12 y- last years of my life into a 5-minute vow? You don't even have to do it. You, you know what like, I And found. I don't necessarily want to write it as a speech. Like I don't want to share like our intimate moments. No, there. yeah, no. But like I want it to be more of like a promise. Yeah. Fuck you, Mila. Mila. Where are feels? Logan. Okay. But it's just like, like I want it to be more of a promise, but at the same time, I'm like, well, I I'll send you this one account that I found. And okay. I've been hiding it from you because I got a quote from this. That okay. Well, for I, you. I could read all the all the TikTok. No, it's um it's an Instagram page and it's also on Lemonade and it basically has um there's all these like long it's from like poems and stuff but it's like for weddings specifically and it's a way to put these people have put words into place that express how i feel that i can't get out Mm -hmm. because it would take me 32 hours to To like explain to me well to explain out loud like i just don't have that art with words and to to read someone else's writing and and it truly can resonate that with you. Yeah, yeah, to be able to resonate it, and I changed like pieces of it to make it more fit like stuff. But like, I, I you should get on there. Has anyone heard it? Has Logan heard it? No, I, Logan heard my first draft that I did of it. The first time that I wrote up the full speech, and then uh, that was like you what? haven't read it to Arletta. No. That's like a sin. No, you I won't. I'm not going to read it to Arletta. I want Arletta to sob her eyes out when I'm reading it out loud. Are you joking? I want Arletta to be bent I need over. That bitch RSVP too. Yeah. As, well, we're she's coming. About by it. the way, I know she's coming. I'm going to get on there. And Just go it. RSVP for her. I think she's I'm waiting so, to hear about Zachary. I'm so excited. To I'm see very her. excited. Yeah, I could cry. Me and her. When when you're on your honeymoon, me and Arletta are on a honeymoon. Are you guys going somewhere? We're going to go to all of the thrift stores, antique markets, warehouses. Yeah, we're going to stay for a week. 
and we're gonna go. You, you live here. We well, we're not. We're gonna stay here. The first few days, we're gonna do some stuff in my garden, and mm-hmm. then me and her are gonna go down, and then we're gonna go to like the coast, the east coast, and we're just gonna go up and down, and we're gonna nice. like get Airbnb's a day out. Like we'll figure it out. Perfect. Yeah, that sounds so fun. And then we're gonna, but it. our main point is we're going to thrift stores and antique markets. And we're gonna go get like little pieces. That's mm-hmm. all. We we both need little pieces for yeah. our houses. Oh, that so that's what so we're fun. doing. I wish I was doing that. I know. I wish you were here to go. But do instead, it too. I'll be laying out on a beach, laying getting out. pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> too far. <laughs> Maybe. Don't. <laughs> Not the time. We're still trying to go on a live show. <laughs> yeah, we still want that live show. Yeah. Anyway, if once we do my f- our first live show, I'll get pregnant immediately. I don't give a fuck. After that, I'm down. I just <laughs> I want to be able to get. You guys want to see Minnie Morgan and Taylor's and give us a ten thousand. Give right us now. ten thousand followers right now. <laughs> right You'll now. See them. I'm talking about on Instagram. <laughs> On Instagram. on Instagram, on Instagram, and on the Tick. podcast, and on TikTok. On the, while we're here. Y'all see me back on TikTok. And on Tik and Talk. Do y'all see me over there on the TikTok? On the She's back on the TikTok. I've been back on the TikTok. Go follow me if you haven't already. It's Taylor J ninety eight. Please God. And, oh fuck. And just go give a comment. That's not this bitch named Meg. No, Meg is so annoying. Meg it wants to fight me. This is this is Meg. If I'm like, oh, I um. <laughs> I go to Hot Works in Knotts, Knoxville. No, you don't go to Hot Works in Knoxville. You go to Hot Works in Cedar Bluff. Like, not in Knoxville. That is not Knoxville. That is Cedar Bluff. That did not happen in Knoxville. That happened in Cedar Bluff. Relax. I'd be like, oh, oh Relax. okay. Relax. That's Meg. Yeah. Relax. Relax. <laughs> I haven't even told them this story. Exactly. Um, but anyways, this is St. Patty's Day 4.0. We're skirting in with these stories. Yeah, we really are. These are, we we really were scraping the bottom of the barrel of like what is like basic knowledge of like Irish lore and like trying to find cases that are old enough that we can talk about them when we are drunk, but also like not, still not be obviously disrespectful because we never would. Yes, and also while on the disrespect note, I'm going to mispronounce 15 different names today. I looked up pronunciations. I tried my fucking hardest. I pulled up Gaelic, Celtic, like everything that you can imagine. We tried. We have we've written them happening. out. We, we, we've written them out, and I'm sure we're still going to butcher them. But you guys, just so we're all, let's make it all clear right now. Let's just clear the Clearly. slate. Let's talk about it. Ireland. We fucking love you. We love you. We mean no disrespect. Everything that we do is in the kindest, most like obsessed way possible with being obsessed with wanting to learn more about this culture and just how beautiful it is. And we talk about it all the time. This is truly like from a place of love and everything that we do. If we if we are disrespectful in any way, we trust that Laura will give us a call or Charlotte will give us a call. Someone will call us up. Someone will give us a Kindly. call. And we will immediately. But if there's any fucking Americans that are in our comments or our, our reviews. If you're American, don't talk to me. If you're American, I don't want to hear a single Not a single, a single thing. Comment. Not a single thing. We have if our, you're Lucy from Surrey with the Irish grandmother who curses everyone, then you're you can to talk. talk. You can talk. But um, I do love your grandmother. Yeah. <laughs> I'm still obsessed with your grandmother. I actually <laughs> was telling a story about her the other day. <laughs> it's amazing. I was literally talking it's about your grandma. story ever. Like, she's my grandma. She the is other our day. grandmother. She actually... Lucy, do you mind to share? Because we really are obsessed with her, uh, with your nan. Is that what you called her, your nan? Nona. Nona was it Nona? Maybe that's Italian. So was it Nona though? Did she call her no, Nona? No, no. I feel like she said my Irish nan. It might have been we nan. Did, but we also had the same in that same creepy account. We had, we had two uh, Italian grandmas. Yeah, in both. You're right. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and executively order that we are both the CEO of. Um, Iron Mike and Banshee Absolutely 100%. On this date And this date only And just so everyone's clear St. Patty's Day not, Is not until the Sunday Following this episode But um, we, We're a week early Yeah we're a week early And normally we do A bonus episode When it's not on the day But we couldn't this year Because of wedding And we just want to make sure That you guys get episodes Every Thursday That's our priority here Number one So you're welcome. You're uh, welcome. And I want Guys I want to thank everyone That went and gave us A rating and a review you got us back to a four eight. You we got us cry. back to a four point eight, and I mean, on Spotify we're like one point four thousand now. On Apple we're one point two, and on Spotify I think we're awesome. at a one point eight. Um, on Apple we're at a one point eight. I 1. still 8. can't get access to Spotify, but we'll have to work that out. Yeah, you gotta. We gotta figure that out. Yeah, because I like it. Drives you me know, nuts. there's an app. Shut up. Apparently, there's an app. 
And it just meant the whole world to me. And I just can't thank you guys enough because it really helped me out a lot today. So go leave a like and review right now. <laughs> so if you haven't already, I'm going to make you feel bad because you're making me depressed. <laughs> uh, I'm just joking. That's not on you. That's on me. Uh, okay. Yeah, that's all. Uh, let's feeling. do a slaunch a chug. Okay. How long? Five. Five. Slauncha. Slauncha. Oh, yeah. That's, this that's, one tastes way better than the first one we had. Yeah. Yeah. The first one was bad. The first one was we were eating ginger root. Yeah, <laughs> we were. We pulled it out of the garden. We were munching on we it. We were eating straight Starting ginger. That, that's what I do when I'm like deathly ill. Uh, all right, Morgan. If you're driving, throw that shit on cruise control. If you got a glass of Jameson ginger and lime, pull that shit up. And let's get creepy. Okay. okay jinx jinx so we're kind of have a little back and forth episode for you guys so i did a lot or i did a lot i did two we kind of our buzz just so like, we're all clear <laughs> like local legends lore mm-hmm. that's kind of what i was shooting for today so the first one i'm going to be talking to you about is the giants causeway it I have to say that is one of the places I I had the opportunity to see when I was in Ireland and it took my breath away. Gorgeous. It's, I mean, I've never been, but pictures. Yeah, I, I want to I wonder if I still have a picture. Yeah. Here's a picture of me down there. No shit. On the and I What's do up with the hands on the hips. I'm the giant. <laughs> literally. I mean, it's just You're like this. I am. There. I am Finn McCool. <laughs> that was the same day that we got to go make our own bread and butter nice and i got to learn how to do an irish like a uh, river dance that's fun that that's shit, what i want to do sign me up sign me up right sign this me moment. up you know what you, let me say this it, we're not gonna give up saint patty's day ups fully until we do go to ireland we have to go to ireland we, we're and you know next year might be our best bet could be could be we said we were going to do it this year, but it just didn't work out with the the wedding date. But like next year, we could make it work. We could maybe make be, that work. I'll be Hawaii. Ireland, You'll be in Hawaii, be Ireland, but that'll be okay. You'll be that'll really be tan, you know. Exactly. Exactly. That I'll, I'll get a spray tan and then we'll go. Oh my God. Can you imagine? Us in Ireland? Yeah, no. I can. That'd be so fun. Okay. We would have the best time of our lives. So, Laura, you're coming. <laughs> legend has it that there was an Irish giant and his name was Finn McCool. And he created this causeway to get across the Irish Sea to face a rival of his, his arch nemesis, the Scottish giant Ben and Donner. So this legend resulted in the giant's causeway that is located in Northern Ireland. It is an area of about 40,000 interlocking basalt columns, which scientifically they want to put a damper on our parade. Shut the fuck up, It's a result of ancient volcanic fissure eruption. <laughs> no <laughs> one cares. <laughs> it's obviously the result of giants. Yeah. Nice try, Obviously. Um, but it literally looks like a giant like rock mountain with yeah. like different like levels of rock. It's really cool. Look up a picture. It's one of the most popular tourist attractions in Northern Ireland. And according to the legend, the columns are the remains of a causeway built by the giant Finn McCool. Once upon a time, there was a mythological Irish giant called Finn McCool who got himself into a little bit of trouble with a very high tempered Scottish giant called Ben and Donner, who had made a claim of made a claim for Finn's island of Ireland. And immediately Finn is like, (laughs) yeah. (laughs) <laughs> so that's my land. So um, that's literally not yours. That's actually not going to work, Ben and yeah. Donner. Nice LOL, try, LOL, though. LOL. And Finn is pissed the fuck off. So he starts throwing these boulders into the sea <laughs> off of T Antrim to Antrim coastline. Hmm. While he's doing so, he gets inspired by the way that they're falling into the water. He's like, oh, well, that actually looks pretty cool. And that's like working my favor because yeah. these boulders are huge. And he has a thought. What if... He just used these boulders to make a bridge or a causeway all the way to Scotland's Isle of Staffa, where Ben and Donner was from. If he did this, then he would be able to challenge his rival to a proper duel to determine the fate of Ireland. Right. In a mythical world where size dictated winners and losers, Finn realized that he had underestimated his energy enemy. Ben and Donner was a giant, even for a giant. This motherfucker was huge. Like, 
Bute, brute, for, bute, brute force is not going to work on him. He's right. not going to be able to just battle him out. This guy is massive. Yeah, it's going to take like a few drinks and some crazy to beat him. So Finn quickly returns back to Ireland via his giant causeway that he created by throwing boulders into the sea and decides that the best way to beat Ben and Donner is to con him. Now, there's two versions of this. One is that they do battle it out and Finn wins. Okay. The other version is this one here. This leaves the giant's causeway for Ben and Donner to find Finn McCoy's McCool, not McCoy. I don't know why I'm saying that. McCoy. Finn McCoy. <laughs> Finn McCool's wife disguising him as a baby. So the giant's wife, who's also a giant, is holding this little giant. She's a strong bitch. She's she's a strong strong bitch. bitch. If if Logan or Aaron asks us to pick them up and carry them like a baby. So Ben and Donner travels across this causeway, and when he arrives to Ireland, he finds Finn McCool's wife like cradling this baby Mm -hmm. and he this enormous giant baby giant baby and he's realizing oh my god well if that's finn's child this baby then finn mccool has to be fucking huge yeah if that's his baby even though it's finn he's like then he's gonna be huge like there's no way gigantor we i could fight him so then the Scottish giant, Ben and Donner, was like, I'm out of here. And he ditches in fear that he would lose this battle. Right. And he hurries away. And when he's retreating back to Scotland, he is tearing away bits of the causeway, mm-hmm. which is why the causeway from Ireland to Scotland is no longer there. He severs all ties between Scotland and Ireland to prevent the giant Finn McCool from following him as he retreated to the Fingal's Cave on the Isla of Staffa. Mm. Isle. Isla. Isle Staffa. Yeah, it's type Staffa. I, I, Isla. So Isla. 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 So it's a female island. Female island. She's cute. She is cute. But what's really cool is that on the other <laughs> the people side. People over there will be like, that is not what that means. Yeah, that's not what I mean. But it's just an age in me. I'm like, girl. <laughs> yeah, that's girl. Um, but what's really cool is that on the other side of the ocean, on the uh, Isla of Staffa, Isla of Staffa, Fingal's Cave has a very similar geology and appearance to the Giant's Causeway in Northern mm. Ireland. Same like ge- geographic structure of the yeah. columns. Granted, it's not on the ocean, Ben. This one's like in the cave, but in you the can cave. see it. I wonder if like they've done like testing on the rocks and stuff. Well, they say it's volcanic. It's a big Well, eruption. let's say that like Pangea. Right. You know. Yeah. Have you ever covered like Pangea? No, because Pangea confuses me. <laughs> So leading people to believe that this legend and myth was really no longer a legend and myth. This was real. This, this, this should is happen. how it was created, which was the birth of the Giant's Causeway, which ultimately is a really cool story, but it's not the only one. There is actually a legend that the Causeway was created out of love. Hmm. So this is a lesser known story, and it was told by Causeway guides back in the 1700s, early 1800s, of Finn building the Causeway for love rather than battle. I love that. And this all stems from a poem that was found in a library in Norway by Eva Hove, who recounted the tale that was told back then. It was written in 1830 by Marianne, and the poem gives a version of events that were told by the Causeway Guide. So I'm going to read you the poem. It says, Finn had fallen in love with a Scottish maiden. Sad that he couldn't reach her, he walked along the shore, skimming stones out across the sea. Seeing the splash that they made, Finn suddenly hit upon a plan. He would build a causeway in order to see his love. Finn labored all day and made good progress in his task, extending the causeway nearly halfway across the sea. Tired, he went home to rest, but confident that he would finish the job the next day. Sadly, his grandmother had other ideas. Afraid of losing him forever to Scotland, she used her magic to call up an enormous storm. Oh no. That bitch. Grandma. That, yeah, grandma. Grandma. Sit You're down. not even a boy mom. The waves and wind lashed the partly built causeway and the rocks were torn apart. Finn awoke the next day to see his handiwork had disappeared. Undaunted, he began to build a new causeway. Once more, the stone stretched out into the ocean, but that very night, his work was destroyed. Finn tried again and again, and the harder he labored, the more violent the storms. Worn out, he made one last attempt, building on through the night. The storms rose up around Finn, tearing at him with thunder and lightning, while wild waves beat at every rock he tried to lift. At last, he reached the other side, but the trial was too much, even for a giant. The trail was too much, even for a giant. Exhausted, he fell down and died in the arms of his beloved. Behind him, the causeway he had built slipped below the waves for a final time. 
A mighty thunderclap sounded, and Finn's granny climbed to the top of a hill to see what had happened. Oh my God. Horrified by what her magic had done, she turned to stone, and she stands there to this day. <gasps> so they do say that at the top of the hill, granny's sculpture is up there, and at the bottom, did you see Finn's boot? Yeah. His, like, iron or stone boot? Yeah, I saw... Wait, is this it? Hold on. I'm pulling out the pictures right now. Hold on. Let me see if I can pull up. But anyway, that's the Causeway story. But so they say that Finn's boo is down below, like where that first picture you showed me was. Mm -hmm. And then Granny is up on the hill. She's just like terrified and gets turned to stone. Um, As she should. This one, I think, is Granny. And then is that the boot? No, no, no. The boot's like, let me show you the boot. No, I can't remember. I didn't go over there. Hold on. Giant this is one where they stack stones at the top because mm. we climbed to the top of that i can't why is it not letting me pull up all my pictures what date was this june 22nd this was also the night that i died in northern ireland this is his boot i mean i don't know if it's gonna pull up but you can see it on the far left yes yes far yes right. i saw his boot i have a picture of it on here somewhere there it is there's his boot yes and it does look like a fucking boot it does it looks just like a fucking it's boot. a literal boot and let me see if i can find the what year did picture. i go there 17 18 is that up here? Yes, that's where. That's yeah. where Granny is. That's where I'm at on in this picture. I'm on top of Granny. Yeah, you're on top of Granny. That's on top of Granny. You're standing on top of Granny. Good. She deserves. She that fucking disrespect. deserves that shit. She wants to ruin her grandson's love like that just because she's a Scottish girl. Me waving. You're right. You're literally chilling on Granny. I was making fun of Granny. You were posting Granny on the gram. I really was. Granny met the gram. This is not the boot, but this is behind the boot. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's really cool <laughs> yeah it's really we i'm taking you we're going i would love to see that oh no, we're going are you joking but how cool is it that across the sea like in the that it path, goes all it, the way there and i just pulled up the map so i could zoom in and yeah, see what like did it where the like? here i'll show it to you it's right here actually i still have it it's not up. like a large body of water right i mean, I mean it's, it's a sea but it's not for like, like you know it's just for obviously. a giant that's probably just for yeah, a giant that ain't shit hike. man yeah so 30 minute walk right here is where the causeway is where right there causeway okay. coast that's where the finn's cave is oh is that that's cool finn's cave no it wasn't no called it's that. not finn i don't remember what it was called Daggle's something like cave that or something yeah like that. whatever his name was cave it's, i mean it's like a big chunk of water but like i mean yeah but like lake. for but like for a giant that's yeah, I mean, like a 30 minute hike fucking two steps bitch. yeah two easy. steps how I big cover, are giants i want to cover giants please Please do because there's I have so, so many questions. There's because so what much. is the height of a giant? You know, like no idea. Mythologically, like what do we have written down? Like well, seven there's foot. So many giants out throughout yeah. mythology that are all different. Like the Tooth Day Danon. Yeah, Tooth Day Danon. Tooth Day Danon. Tua Day Danon. Tua Day Danon. Yeah, those are giants, right? Those are giants. They actually come up in my next story. Oh, yeah. Good to and see this you guys is again. like this is like all like there's no year, but like this is like legend like before the 15, 1400s. Like this yeah. is like probably before christ if i had to oh guess. yeah obviously remember moses like ditched his fucking family yeah like this is and like, there were already people living in ireland because when they came up there they had to fight the mythological beings of giants ireland giants were with dinosaurs and oh uh, that would make sense and they were their pets that would make sense because of the size difference because right. why were dinosaurs so huge yeah because you know like giants. even humans aren't huge right we're tiny and our animals are tiny. Right. And our animals are You have an are elephant tiny. and a giraffe. You know, like but they're a tree not, like, is huge. bigger. Like, yeah, an elephant and giraffe are the only things that can almost whale. Like, compete with a tree, a whale, obviously, but in the ocean space. Mm -hmm. <laughs> space. Yeah. Space. Outer space. But, like, seriously, though, like, w in the trees, like, for the most part, us as humans and, like, species that live on land, like, we're granted. The giraffes, same size as animals. We're elephants. all the same size. We're all like equal. But and like, why were dinosaurs so big? By gi ginormous. Because they were with giants. And like, were they always that big or was there like an evolution of dinosaurs? Do we even know that much or what's I that about? I don't fucking know. When even were dinosaurs? Was when were before they? Before or after Jesus? I don't know. They were way before Jesus. Because oh, okay. dinosaurs were before humans and then they came but what, down with the asteroid. Why do they show in movies cavemen with dinosaurs? Why do they do that? You know, I think it's like, Maybe there were cavemen. I mean, I'm sure there were like Homo sapiens, right? Because there to had be. to be like other species other than just dinosaur. What if they were giants? And you know that theory—not theory, but like scientific theory. Theory, like it's not even like a conspiracy theory that like they could have been like bird family, like 
in terms of chickens, like they would have feathers. Dinosaurs, Dinosaurs would have had feathers. That's terrifying. Yeah, like they wouldn't have been as reptilian as Birds we thought. Birds are freaky. Birds are crazy. Birds aren't real. How the fuck did they teach birds to carry stuff back and forth for letters and shit in no. the 16th century? I have no idea. I have no idea. I couldn't even teach Ollie to do that. I mean, maybe if I tried, but like he'd still and be around. No, no. He okay. saw a squirrel, he'd detour. Let's talk about a bird though. Like a bird brain, I'm almost going to compare to a cat brain. Smaller. Imagine me being like Ophi. Take this note to Morgan's house. <laughs> Literally. Nona. You know, well, Nona, Nona, Nona does. Come Nona to my house. does do it. You Guys, know. I swear to you that Nona ditches this house and shows up in my backyard to check on her old home. <laughs> I swear. I see this cat. It looks just like fucking Nona. And I'm like, ma'am? Yeah, exactly. And she looks at me. And anytime I spot this cat, it like looks at me and is has like the face of like oh fuck i'm busted i'm been busted. and then sprints away <laughs> and i'm like no no what are you doing here no no you need to go back home your mother's looking for you and that cat bothers the fuck out of ollie he and it, knows that would Nona. be nona i think nona slips away i really do and travels to well me. if anything like she's doing it spiritually because she sleeps all day yeah she's long. fucking in there uh, she's actually actual projecting, projecting over there over all to the time. my house she misses her boyfriend gezi yeah and she misses me yeah, of course. And She's Ollie. pissed as fuck about right now because we took her chair. 100%. Yeah, if you guys aren't watching on YouTube, which this should be out on YouTube. She is always sleeping. She's always sleeping. She's astral projecting. Oh, all day, every Taylor's, day. Th- put this in the books. Taylor's cat is astral projecting to my house every day. I, I really do believe that. You know who would be able to confirm? Susan. I know. Because you know why I think Nona does it too? is because she was obsessed with the, sp- the woman spirit that lives in your house. Yeah. Like obsessed. And sometimes I see like, I know you saw this too, but like mm-hmm. a cat like running by. Snow there was a cat there that would run by me all the time. And yeah. it wouldn't be one of my cats. Right. It would be. A ghost cat. A ghost cat. Mm-hmm. And I'd be there like. there is no cat in there. Ollie would. Are you guys kidding? I mean, obviously like Ollie right. would be chasing it the entire time. But it was there. She's sharpening her nails. Oh. On like her boom. little sharpener thing. No, anyway. she heard us talking about her, so she had to get up and go sharpen her nails to make sure that we don't fuck around and find out. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to go next with a, a true crime case. Okay. And I need everyone to know right now that this is, I am <laughs> not, I did not do the full extent of the case that could be done. I know that other bigger podcasts have done it and there's that books on it and everything like that. However, this is not the time nor the place. And I just wanted to cover it because it's, called the last technical witch trial of ireland okay and i don't have that many true crime cases to be able to do in ireland that are old enough that we can actually discuss them while we're drinking and not be unethical so this is why i chose this one granted you guys know that we would never be unethical and if we ever are you you have every right in the world to give us a a call period not a review a call an email yeah an email so this is the case of bridget bull Bridget Boland Cleary. Bridget Boland Cleary was born on February 19th, 1869. And this is one of the words I'm scared about pronouncing. Bali Vaudley. Sounds good. Bali Vaudlia, which is in County Tipperary, Ireland. Okay. At 18 years old, she married Michael Cleary on August 6th, 1887. Only after meeting each other, like knowing each other for one month. And they had met in Clonmel. Slay little mama. Uh, again, question on that um, pronunciation. I apologize. Now, that's where she was working at the time as a dressmaker's apprentice. And Michael was working as a cooper, which is someone who specializes. Speciali- <laughs> oh, wow. This um, I feel the jam is me. <laughs> specializes in making wooden barrels, baskets, etc. And not long after their wedding, Bridget returned to her parents' home where she was raised in Bolivar. Wherever. You know, where I was in County Tipperary. And um, Michael had to stay in Clonmel because he had to work in order to save up for them to have a life together. And he was making great money there. Now, during this time that they spent apart, Bridget kind of really, like, got in touch with her badass, independent woman energy. Like, she was really fucking feeling herself. She kept to her, like, her own flock of chickens. And she managed those motherfuckers and sold their eggs for money, which was 
unheard of for a woman to do at this time. Good Bridget for her. saved up all of her money and she purchased a Singer sewing machine, which was at that time literally state of the fucking art. Like a woman making her own money, which and buying it with her own money, which immediately 100%. she truly wanted to become like her own and be an independent dressmaker and all of that sort. Did you hear that? I did. It fell. Okay. I watched it. Did it fall a bit or just, just a like a d- Okay, drop. good deal. Um, so yeah, she just like wanted to become like an independent dress and hat maker and that was her shit. So she just like hustled her ass off so that she could get enough money to buy a singer. She was a professional, hardworking woman that really could hold her own. After establishing herself in her village, she unfortunately faced that her mother had passed away. And at this point, Michael had moved from Clonmel to County Tipperary, where she was living in the place that starts with a B that I'm afraid to pronounce again, to help Bridget care for her elderly father, Patrick, in the Bolin family cottage. Now, this is a big deal as their home was reserved for laborers, which her father had been since a really young age. And their home was considered to be one of the best cottages in the village, like top tier. Meaning that Bridget and Michael were set for the rest of their lives unless, of course, after the death of her father, another laborer was entitled to that home. But that wasn't something that anyone was worried about, such as them in that family or in the village, because nobody, no fucking body in the village wanted this cottage and was virtually virtually unsellable. Because why? Well... Supposedly, it was built on the site of a fairy ring fort, which if you haven't listened to one through three point of St. Patty's Day specials, uh, or if you've totally forgotten, like me, they are the remains of stone circle, hill forts, ring forts, tree forts, or other circular prehistoric dwellings in Ireland from possibly the late Iron Age or older. Traditional Irish teachings claim that fairy forts were created by druid magic, meaning that you are not to alter or mess with them in any way, shape, or fucking form. And if anyone did, you would be cursed and face tragic misfortunes for the rest of your life. That's terrifying. Terrifying. So up until this point, there is not like any reports if the family had experienced any like massive tragedies or anyone that lived in this home. However, that would soon change. In early March of 1895, Bridget fell extremely ill. And after about a week of her doing what she could to manage her own illness with her father and her husband caring for her, she continued to get worse and worse. On March 13th, a doctor was called to the cottage to visit Bridget, and he diagnosed her with bronchitis but her condition was so dire at the time of this visit that he actually immediately called for the priest father ryan to come and minister last rites oh my god right so for the next two days family friends filled this home like completely wanting to tend to Bridget as her condition was worsening. They performed rituals. They administered countless home remedies to try and heal her. Things that typically would work for someone who was battling with bronchitis at this point in time. Yet nothing, and I mean absolutely nothing, was working. She continued getting worse and worse. At this point, Bridget's husband and elderly father began accusing her of being a fairy sent to take Bridget's place, deceiving them, a.k.a. a changeling. If you don't remember what a changeling is, this is when a fairy comes and kidnaps a person, takes them to fairyland, and then that fairy shapeshifts into Into the the position of that person. Usually a child, though. Normally a child. Yeah. But because of, like, the circumstances surrounding her illness, they were like, this is a changeling. We're in a ring fairy fort. Yeah. 100%. At this point, Bridget's husband and elderly father were accusing her of being a changeling. Therefore, they performed a ritual to try and free their beloved daughter and wife of this fairy and the fairy land, which was throwing urine on her I'm and sorry. hanging her over fireplaces. I'm sorry. Yeah. I, I'm jaw dropped. Literally stunned. Never heard of that the before. The urine? Y- urine on me? I would have been like, ew. Ew? ew? When do you drink Fuck any out of water? Here. You're nasty. You're nasty. This shit, this, this piss, yellow. Nasty Gold. Throwing piss on me? too far i'm literally just sick 
you fucking pussy bitches can't take care of me because I'm sick. Right. And so you're like, let me throw urine on you. That's the only other option here. You know damn well her poor mama. If her poor mama would have been there. Stop. Mama would have been like, y'all are fucked in the head. She was literally making you money, by the way. Literally. She bought a Singer sewing machine. Yeah. To this day, those are still very like highly valued sewing 100%. machines. You, I need to put that on my registry. You don't need a sewing machine. I have a singer. You can borrow it whenever you I'm want. I'm going to get a singer. You want I'm going to learn how to sew. You know what? You honestly should because it is an iconic thing to know. I'm going to. Because I give you my sewing kit. You need I it. I still have it. I yeah, still exactly. exactly. Sewing kit. At. Yeah, you need it. You got to know how to sew. Just kidding. I'm not on my Add it because what we need, dining room table. Yeah, so they threw urine on her and hung her over a fireplace. It's fucked up. And interestingly enough, by March 16th, after three days of home remedies and rituals, some rumors began swirling around the village that Bridget was missing. Yeah. Well, you heard know that where right. where our eyes need to go. The woman who was on her deathbed so badly that they had to come have a priest do last rites was now missing. And she didn't get up and walk away. Right. So local police, uh, obviously, they come in and they start investigating her disappearance and searching for 26-year-old Bridget. The first thing that they do, of course, is turn to her husband and her father. Her husband is Michael Cleary and her father is Patrick Bolin, by the way. I don't know if I said that already. When they talked to these two, but specifically Michael, they were immediately only more concerned about Bridget's well-being because this is what Michael had to say. Quote, my wife was taken by fairies and I'm going to be holding a vigil for her this evening. He did not. That's what he said to police. He Red did flag. not. Red flag. So over the next week, investigators pressed the family and friends of Bridget to tell them where the fuck she was because they knew that everyone in the town had been going over to visit her and make sure she's okay and like do what they could to help her. I thought I was going to die. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait to clip that. I can't even fix it. I no, we're not fixing that. That's what it's gonna look this like. Looks perfect. That's what it's gonna daddies. be for the rest of the day. So um, just like I'm telling y'all, you're on you're on the right. <laughs> you're track. on your last leg with the St. Patty's Day shit. That's what they're telling us. Oh, so um, by the way, if you haven't already, it's Thursday, and this past Sunday you got to change your clocks. All right, it was it was a uh, we're hired. It is currently Sunday with daylight savings, and we have no idea what time it is or where we're at. No, no idea. Yeah, so, it feels like midnight. It feels like it's two in is the morning. It still sunny out. Oh no, it's dark. Is it dark? Yeah, but it's eight. Yeah, I thought it was supposed to be light at eight. I bet in a few months it will be. Who wants to wait a few months? May. By May, it'll be. Hopefully by April. No, oh. actually, no, I want it dark. Yeah, you Don't want look dark. at me. No one look at us more on the dance floor. <laughs> Don't look at me on the dance floor. I'm fine with it getting dark at eight. Me too. Okay. So, um, where were we at? Okay. So over the next week, investigators press the family, friends, neighbors of Bridget to to tell them where she was and or what happened and or what had Michael done. Mm -hmm. And each of them gave witness statements and all of the information that they could. And after this, nine people were arrested and charged with the nine disappearance. Nine people? Nine people of Bridget, including her own husband and father. By March 22nd, Bridget's charred remains were discovered in a shallow grave. Oh, my God. She had either been burnt alive, from what they could tell, publicly in front of those who believed that she was actually a changeling, or she had been previously passed away and then burned in order to do a ritual of a sort. Wow. Either way, someone had done this to her, a.k.a., Everyone knew it was her own husband. On July 3rd of that same year, a grand jury indicted five of the original nine defendants for her murder, including Michael Cleary, her husband, Patrick Bolin, her father, Mary Kennedy, James Kennedy, and Patrick Kennedy, which are some people... Kennedy family. Some sources, right? Some sources say that they're cousins um, oh. of Bridget. Others say that they're neighbors. 
Oh, I thought you were going to say like of the Kennedy family. Oh, right? no. I mean, I, I probably should. Probably are. Could have been able to look that up. Whereas all nine of the original defendants were also indicted, though. Like those were the ones that were charged, but everyone was indicted on charges of at least wounding Bridget. That is so incredibly fucked up. And the trial told a story that shook the village to its core. According to the evidence gathered by investigators, on March 15th, Michael asked that Father Ryan return to the home, to the cottage, and he did so. And this is the same priest that had come to read her her last rites. When he arrived, he found a very much alive, yet just pissed off, agitated Bridget, who was still on bed rest because she was sick. Michael told Father Ryan that he did not believe in the medication that the doctor had prescribed to Bridget. Therefore, he had not been giving it to her. Him and Patrick, Bridget's father, had been withholding it That's from fucked her. Up. Michael continued by saying, quote, People may have some remedy of their own that might do more good than a doctor's medicine. End quote. Okay. At this point, Father Ryan basically was like all right well then what do you need and michael was like will you just give bridget communion and he did that and he and then father ryan left the home while later that night many neighbors and relatives and friends from the village arrived at the cottage i don't understand why they're all just pulling up like it's not a fucking show to see i have some maybe respect. just like to help her and like be like wow she's but they being had taken care of a motive because they're also being thinking like okay this is a changeling you know yeah. like it's not let's go see a changeling in real life that's what they're right. thinking that's what they're thinking so many people came to the house including like family members relatives neighbors people from the village um, arrived at the cottage and during this gathering it seemed as if like an argument ensued with many people but mainly it was between michael and bridget discussing fairy mythology and accusing her of being a changeling so bridget gets fed the fuck up with not only her husband but her dad and everybody else accusing her of being a changeling instead of being actually sick and could be remedied by prescription medication that they're withholding from her because they believe it don't work exactly they keep being like you're a fan they're doctors you're a fucking fairy changeling bitch so so she says to her husband and this is a quote and it's so fucking iconic i love this already the only person quote the only person who had gone off to live with the fairies is your mom. That's what she says to her husband. Not a your mom joke. Not your mom joke. In 1800s. But what if his mom really did? Go to live off with the fairies. Whoa. Whoa. I mean, Bridget came out the fucking She mouth. created your mom joke. She did. And Bridget basically was being like, go fuck yourself. But I yourself. think she was being serious also. Yeah, me, no, like I think 100%. Like, if you're worried about anybody going off to live in the Worry fucking your fairies, fucking your mom. Your mom. <laughs> your mom. I Yo love mama. That for her. Truly. Now, this is where it gets really awful. And I do want to give you a trigger warning because his mom must have gone ahead and lived with the fairies and he must have too. Oh. Because this motherfucker flies off the handle and does some crazy live with the fairies. So type that shit. triggered him. Triggered him. He gets angry and he starts trying to force feed her by throwing her physically on the ground out of her bed in front of the kitchen fireplace and like holding her as close as he could to it threatening her with a burning piece of wood now during this struggle where she's fighting back with her own husband in front of a crowd of people in her cottage and her own father and no one's like no one's stopping They're like, him. oh, he's just, she's a changeling. That yep. is so fucked up. Fucked he's up. an abuser. He's That's an abuser, he yeah. In the struggle, Bridget's undergarments or like her gown that she, like her, you know, 1800s underwear mm -hmm. catches on fire. And instead of trying to help her put out the fire, Michael jumps up, he grabs a lamp and he pours kerosene lamp oil on his wife. Again, many, with a crowd of people, many people are watching this in the house, witnessing as this is happening, yet no one went to help her because the few that did were being held back by Michael. Oh, my God. Who insisted 
that 100% this was not his wife, Bridget, who, by the way, he only knew for a fucking month before marrying her. So how do you even know her that well? It was a changeling. He rambled on telling all of those who were witnessing Bridget burning to death and fighting for her life that his wife had been a changeling for at least an entire week at this point and that his goal was not to mess with this changeling but to go into the fairylands and find his wife. What the fuck? She was sick, honey. She just had bronchitis. She was fucking sick. She just had bronchitis. To prove to the jury in the trial that this was in fact the real Bridget and not a changeling, the prosecution or whatever that would be called, there's no like exact term that I could find, Mm -hmm. especially for 1800s Ireland, but in the US we would understand it as the prosecution. The prosecution takes the jury to this warehouse where Bridget's body was being held prior to her being buried. And whatever it is that they saw, which I don't have exact details on, and I'm sure Probably if I read the book. human skeleton, not to be morbid. No, but, it it was charred remains. Right. It wasn't like a but skeleton. Like, but like if it's a changeling, it would go back to its natural form. And they could see her face, though. And it was a human. And it, it was Bridget. Yeah. The prosecution took the jury to see her body and whatever it was that they observed and saw proved to the jury that Bridget had suffered greatly prior to her death with extensive injuries on top of her burnings. These are the names of the people that are listed as being the defendants. Um, John Dunn or Dune, which is D-U-N-N-E, Michael Kennedy and William Kennedy were all convicted of wounding Bridget. Patrick Kennedy was sentenced to five years of penal servitude, which is manual labor, but like in a jail. So it's not like out in the sun or anything like that. Michael Kennedy was sentenced to six months of hard labor. James and William Kennedy were sentenced to 18 months of hard labor. Mary Kennedy was released due to her young age. She was apparently like a young girl. John Dunn or Dune was sentenced to three years of penal servitude. Bridget's father, Patrick Boland, elderly father, by the way, was sentenced to six months of hard labor, which is like in the fields, like in the sun, hardcore. And Michael Cleary, her husband, was found guilty of manslaughter and sentenced to 20 years of penal servitude, which means prison. After serving 15 years in prison, though, he was released on April 28th, 1910, after which he immediately moved to Liverpool and then to Canada in July of that same year. Bridget's death has been popularly described as, quote, the last witch burned in Ireland or as the subject as the last of the witchcraft trials. Although it has been noted that Bridget was never actually described to have any relations with the devil which is customary with accused witches. Instead, she was thought to have been replaced by a fairy or a changeling. Wow. Um, H. O'Connell and P.G. Doyle in 2006, in their 2006 uh, article speculated that the murder may have actually been the result of Michael developing a brief psychotic disorder, which manifested into Capgrass delusion, which basically means like a delusion that is specifically about a family member or a spouse owing the stress to managing Bridget's illness. Like basically saying like the stress of her being ill and like potentially dying was so much on him that he kind of fell into the psychosis and like was in denial of the fact that she could possibly die from her illness. And this became the ca- a case of shared psychosis after he persuaded others the such as her father, the entire town, family members, neighbors, so on, that she had been replaced by a fairy, thus a changeling. And at this point, it would have become like a case of shared ca- psychosis with... Mm-hmm basically the village yeah and i i believe that's probably the most plausible especially with the fact that everyone knew that this that their house was at a you know ring Only, for you know yeah fueled that fueled that psychosis, even more yeah now today the way that bridget clary is remembered is through a children's rhyme that is titled are you a witch or are you a fairy and it's for jump roping and it goes are you a witch or are you a fairy or are you the wife of michael clary and that is the case of Bridget Clary. Not a jump rope song. That's fucked up, Ireland. Why y'all got to do that? Whoa. That has nothing to do with us. I need us to cover like Ring Around the Rosie and 
We need a children's like, rhymes. Children's rhymes. Next St. Patty's Day. That's if we can't find anything, that's what we should oh, I do. I want to do it right now. Like the dark, like on one of our episodes that we're stockpiling. Oh like my God. Wait, that's a great one. Rhymes. Do that one. Dark histories. No, like I'm saying both of us. Wait, together. that's a stunning one. Let's do dark histories. Y'all of, love like, that one time rhymes. that we did dark histories. Yeah, we should do that 100%. Because we have, we have, sorry, we're just thinking out loud here, but yeah. we have a lot of like packed up pre recordings because of the Bachelorette and then the, yep. some travel, other travel days. So, that would be great. That for would us. be great for us. And that we've been talking about doing that for the longest. Yeah. It's time. That is a crazy story. I know. And it's so sad. It is. Because she just had fucking bronchitis. Like Yeah, for real. Like, she's not a, a fuck- fucking changeling. Get a fucking grip. But like Michael why Clary. the fuck are Michael? Oh my god, she's been replaced by a fairy. No, she hasn't. She's just sick. And she's probably pissed the fuck and off. She's like, you know, you're fucking mom, bro. Literally, you're fucking mom. I, I can't breathe in here. I have bronchitis. I need my meds. You keep bringing and- all these people in. You won't give me any medicine to clear my lungs. Like are you fucking so kidding me? So the other people were charged for wounding her, but what did they do? Exactly? They probably like held her down. Yeah. And denied aiding. Right. Which is aiding and abetting. Right. And also so like that would be accessory. Wounding. Accessory, essentially. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. But That's that is crazy. the last witch trial considered trial because they basically where is that in reference i know you probably don't know this i don't know this i don't think anyone knows this what is that time frame in reference to our witch trials 1700s ours were 17 Mm -hmm. theirs was uh so 1700s started in like germany with like the sarland sarland Mm -hmm. witch trials and then you come and, and then they were like all right People, not everyone's witches god damn like yeah like, let's chill like, like not, we need women on this planet take a xanax and sit back on this like, planet smoke so some weed and just everyone, fucking yeah. chill out yeah exactly and then i want to say that ours were like early 1800s late 1700s i think so too so then Salem this one was, was late that sounds right. that sounds right to me and then this happened in late eight, 1895 so 1895 yeah dude five years away from night her husband was released in 1910 oh my god 1910 you know what makes me sick it's like so close to world war one that's crazy to think so the next story i have for you is the children of lear yeah l-i-r i think lear i believe it's lear i've been saying and lear this is sourced from the wilderness ireland.com so i didn't really know any other way to tell you guys a story than to like tell it to you so yeah i'm just telling it to you it's from that it that it's from the source it's from the source period. literally straight from the source so one point in time there was a great lord and his name was lear and he was passed over to be new ca- new ca- new king he was going to be the new king the new but ca- he got passed over to not be the new con- <laughs> and he was really pissed off and he was like i'm just fucking in line for that throne and how fucking dare you? So right. he's like, that's fine. I just won't swear allegiance to the throne. Right. Wait. And he's a lord and he's a powerful lord. He's a powerful lord that would also command us immediately to do a five second chug. Five second lord chug. Lord Lear says five second chug. Slancha. Just finish up. Mine was it's all water, so to be cold. honest. It is watery, but it's so cold. Whoa. Whoa. My, the back of my neck is wide open. Woo! Woo! All okay. right. King Lear. Now I'm switching phones. I don't know where I am. Oh, yeah. Lord Lear. Lord Lear. Apologies. Okay. <laughs> so he refused to swear allegiance to the new king. And the new king is, this is where you're going to bear with me, Bod Durg. <laughs> <laughs> not funny wait i'm sorry can i see how it's spelled i just i need to have, i need to have an idea of what you're looking b-o-d-b bodby bod derg bod derg but it's bot bod it's derg bod king derg b derb derg so as a gesture of peace the new king king derg offers lord lear his own daughter and i'm just gonna show you guys Whoa. how this is spelt tell you a-o-i-b-h how do you pronounce that? A O I B H. A O. What would A O B? Do you want to know how it's pronounced? Please. Eve. No, it's not. Yes, it's Eve. B H? Yes. Call 911. Her name is Eve. So King Durg offers Lord L- Lear, his daughter Eve's hand in marriage, hoping that this is going to end their feud because he's a very prominent lord and he needs his allegiance. Like he could turn. What? <laughs> 
He said fuge. <laughs> and the feud. In the feud. In the centrifuge. The, like, I'm going to give you my daughter and we're going to be cool. Yeah. I'm gonna, fucked up. I'm going to give you my daughter. Here's my daughter. We, I need your allegiance. We're, let's end this feud. The, not centrifuge. <laughs> not the centrifuge. So he's like, okay, well, Eve's hot. So Eve and Lear go on to lead like a very happy life and okay so eve there, was okay with this she's okay with it okay. she's like oh yeah he's a lord like i'll, I'll marry him I'll for fuck, sure you know I'll i mean fuck at for least that's, a, that's as much as we know well she, she for all okay she knows she she i mean for all we know she could have been like you know what this is the times like i'm gonna go get my bag right and also they didn't know any different it was it was a setup marriage it was always. set up even though it's fucked up it, yeah to us just because it's not this our norm their day to day right and this marriage and this happy life resulted in four children I will run through these names and I will never say them again. Their daughter, Fionnuala. Wow. Their three sons, AODH. And they had twins, Fiatra and Khan. Fiatra and Khan. Fiatra. Twins. Four children. Well, yeah. So a daughter and three boys. Got it. Unfortunately, Eve died after the last birth of the twins oh, so no. when the twins were born eve died and it's unsure if she died during childbirth or just like right after but i would yeah, assume childbirth like a hemorrhage yeah. because there's twins and uh, you know yeah, no medicine then lot. okay so at this point so his the king dirk's daughter eve dies and he mm. had grown a liking to lear and he wanted his children to grow up with a mother and he wanted lear to stay remain happy because he needed his alliance so what does he do no he offers another one of his daughters I mean, what could possibly go wrong with that? Like, well, what in the hell? Why does why doesn't your aunt now mother your children? Right. You know, like this is her sister. But you know, kids. how many cases have we told like this? Right. Exactly. And this time, it was an it was his daughter. She was beautiful, but she was very bitter, and her name was A O I F E. So, I F E. Ife. Even Ife. That's kind of what I'm going. Ife. Yeah, I guess. Ife. Yeah. So I'm going to call her Ife. I'm sure that's wrong. I'm so sorry if you guys know these names. Well, these just... are gorgeous spellings. But like the other day I found or Orla was spelled. Oh, Orla was spelled with I-T-H at the end. And it means like Irish. Orla is the um, Irish golden goddess. Oh, wow. And I was like, gorgeous name. How do you spell that? And it looks like or I lith, which stunning, mm -hmm. but like I just never would think to pronounce it like that. Yeah. So this is Ife. We're going to go with yeah, that. Yeah, Ife. Yeah. Well, we know one thing about stepmothers. They get a bad rap in fairy tale and folklore stories. Yeah. Think of Cinderella. And right on cue, it wasn't long until I was really jealous of Lear's love for his children. Yeah. And again, she was bitter. She was beautiful, but she was bitter. So Lear was like not really like growing this attachment to towards her. Right. He loved on his children and he was playing the role of both mother and father, which left little room in the house for Ife. Well, yeah, because she's kind of like a sign to be there, too. Like, he right. could have been okay with being a single dad. And they aren't married at this point. She's just like the bride. Yeah. They're going to be married. See, yeah. So she was feeling shut out and unloved. And Ife grew more and more bitter and eventually jealous of Lear's love and attention that he was giving to his children. Well, Ife had some knowledge of magic and she had far too much jealousy going on. Hmm. And she knew that there was one solution to her problem. Oh, no. And that was to kill the children of Lear herself. No. Her own nieces and nephews. Literally her own Her own family, blood. Her own blood. Yeah. So she calls the four children out to her one night and she proposes that they go out to the shore of the lake. So the kids are like, sure, like you're our stepmom. Like we're children at this point. Like, yeah, let's go. Yeah. Like they're probably like eight, six, five. You know, they're not yeah. like teenagers. But once they arrive, she doesn't have the guts to kill them. She realized that she actually cannot go through with this. Right. So instead, she proposes for them to go for a swim. And once the children of Lear were in the water, she used black magic to cast a spell over them. In the place of the four children, beautiful and beloved children, were now four feathery white swans bopping around the lake. No. So she turned them into swans. But with this spell came a time limit. And she chose that the children were doomed to spend 300 years as swans on the Loch Derivara in Co. Westmouth. Westmouth. Wow. Not only that, but then a second 300 years on the rough sea of Moyle, 
which is the North Channel that separates Scotland from Ireland. Right. And then another 300 years on a little rocky island called Inis Glora in Comeo. So 900 years total, these children were destined to be swans. Right. Long after she had died. But she did have a heart. So while they were swans, she gave them the powers of speech, reason, and dignity. So now you have talking swans in the water. Great. That's going to go well for them. Yeah. But when she came back to her father's castle alone without the children that night, her father, King Durg, was really suspicious, but kind of like kept it to himself, like knowingly, like she came back without the children, but also like, I'm not going to cause anything because I already know they have a rocky relationship and I really value. I know better. You know, yeah. opinion and our relationship. But once Lur, is it Lear? Was I saying Lear? Lear. Once Lear grew suspicious and showed the same concern to his father-in-law, the king, they both realized that she had done something very bad. It wasn't until Lear went to the shores of the Loch Dyrbrick or whatever it's called. Um, and that's when he heard four swans singing in human voices. As he listened closer, he realized that these swans were singing in his children's voices. And in that moment, he knew what his bride, this evil stepmother, the aunt to these children had done. So when he shared this information with the king, the king is pissed off because let's be real. These are her sister's children. These are the king's grandchildren, possible heirs to the throne of the child that he lost. And she turned them into swans Swans. for 900 years. Right. So as a punishment, he cursed her to what they imagine as the worst shape that any human could take, a demon of the air. (gasps) And to this day, she remains that. Yeah. But the children, unable to leave each location until each 300-year-long spell was at its end, they were unable to return home to live with their father and family while they were still here on Earth. I mean, 900 years, no one's going to be alive. Right. Instead, generations of Tooth Day Denon. Yeah. Right? Do we say Tua or Tooth Day Denon? Tooth Day Denon. It's like tooth, right? Yeah, tooth. Yeah. I think so. Generations of Tooth Day Denon came to hear their beautiful songs before the swans stay on the Loch Derivara was over. The song of the swans was said to be magical, able to make happy people even more blissful, able to remove pain from illness and sorrow, and peace filled the lands. But when those 300 years ended, it was time for them to go to the stra- or the Sea of Moyle, otherwise known as the North Channel, where it was much colder and harsher, and violent storms would then separate the children of Lear from one another, freeze their feathers, and drench their spirit. Oh. So then those 300 miserable years came and went. The swan's final 300 years were spent in the waters that surrounded the island of Inis Glora and Comeo, which is on Ireland's wild, Atlan- wild Atlantic Way. And this is where, like, Christianity came in and took this story. So where Noah abandoned his whole family. And- Cri- Christianity comes in, takes this story, um, making their self present in it, the children of Lear right. legend, and... <clears throat> during so they said that while the children were in the island of Inis Glora they started praying to God to protect them and their prayers were heard and answered and the remaining years of swans on Inis Glora and Mayo were actually good ones because of God now this story is now converted into Christianity right from this point on and so then those 300 years came and went and finally they were freed from their curse to remain connected to specific bodies of water they returned home to where their father, Lear, was living. Right. But they found their former home in ruins and deserted. So they were treated to the beautiful island of Inis Glora, which was, again, off the coast of Mayo. And it was here that they heard the ringing of a church bell. Again, this is when Christianity takes the story over. And suddenly they were struck with the knowledge that this bell would remove their 900-year-long curse. They met a monk. Sometimes people say that this was St. Patrick himself. Oh, wow. Um, and they, the, this monk heard their singing and knew immediately who they were, the children of Lear. So despite their happiness and liberty in the company of the monk, the swans had not regained their human form. The king of Cognac, King Larginen, wa- <laughs> I'm so sorry, wanted the magical swans for himself and came in search of the swans. But once he touched them, 
because he wanted them for like bad vibes. Yeah, you know, he was not good. Utilize them. Not a good dude. Um, once he touched them, they were transformed into three old men and one old woman, the now aged children of Lear. And upon transportation, and when they were close, transportation, upon transformation and close to death, they requested to be baptized before they died. And that was their fate, death of old age. I mean, look, that would be my wish after living 900 years I as a like, swan. I just want to go. Like, I just want to go on. And also, like, where's the demon of air? Because I'm about to fuck her up. Yeah, where the fuck is where's that bitch aunt? at? Where's our stepmom? Yeah, what's her tea? Because that kind of sounds like the Banshee, like, origin That's story. That's what but I and was La, thinking, La, too. La Llorona. Yeah, she's got to have an origin story, 100%. Yeah, 100%. I mean, that is her origin story, but, like, right, but like a, what is a, a lore demon? around yeah. her? Like, a demon of air. Like, is she Banshee? No, we covered who Banshee I, is. Yeah, but, like, still, that like, could be, like, a spinoff. Like, yeah. Banshee's cousin. Yeah, and that's actually so, so sidetrack here, but... Whenever I was covering, I did like a full three and a half pages of um, the Hellfire Club. Yeah, you did. And when I was covering it, it started telling me about how, you know, you guys remember the story of where the devil came into the castle himself. They were playing cards. Someone dropped a card. They saw his hoofs. hoofs yeah, hoofs. And he shot through the ceiling. Well, that was also in the Hellfire Club. Was that Club. on, wait, was that on Patreon? I don't know what it was on, but I went and I found the notes for it. I searched it. It was on Patreon. And it was an entirely different story. It was about a castle. What? Yeah. We covered about the about a castle and a sheriff and the sheriff was in on this and it was not the Hellfire Club. How crazy is that? So like, obviously, I mean, that just shows right there that legends get mixed. Yeah, because like the Hellfire Club, the I remember covering Hellfire Club, I think with... Um, when we did Stranger Things, right? Well, I also remember being like, "This is like Hellfire Club, but not like Stranger Things." Hellfire Club, right? Like I, I remember, vis- like, I remember, I remember that. talking about that. Did we record that on the couch? I think so because I remember Hoofs was on the old season two couch, like the day bed. Yeah, but I don't know. Yeah, so it. I mean, it just shows that like legends and lores like will are split, and like people will utilize it. like it. Just yeah, gets, in different like, situations. Thrown around. But so basically, like the Hellfire Club, it was this guy he built a hunting cabin above these ancient ruins, and he, after he died, um, I mean, like they said, like the spirits were restless there. That one time a storm came through, blew off the roof, and so after he died, this guy Robert Kel- Robert Conley or like something like that, something so familiar, he came in and he bought this old cabin and he used it as these like satanic meetings and rituals. Right, that is not, and then so they would leave a place for the devil. They would set a seat for him. And like, that is not the story that we were talking about. No, that's not what we were talking crazy? about at all. That's and they were crazy. like, in the one night, the devil came. They were playing cards. I mean, maybe that is just the way the devil shows himself, like card nights. And card know. games and like Las Vegas. That makes sense. Oh, fuck. I mean, think about that. That tracks. That tracks. That tracks. Because I mean, like, you know, what's, you know what's more like demonic to me is like, like, okay. I'm saying this very flippantly and I understand that like what I'm saying is not based on any sort of truth or anything but like when I do tarot cards like it's more of like an energetic situation for me you know personally Mm -hmm. it's reading energy when I play cards I'm playing for fucking blood. You know yeah. what I mean? Like I'm playing for money. Bring I'm playing for Uno, blood. No, that's a devil's. Game. It's literally a devil's game. Like think about that. Like cards and gambling and stuff. That's why, like Tennessee, you can't, you can't. We don't have casinos and shit. Yeah, I wonder why. It's what too much that, of the though? devil. It's it's a sin. Oh really? Yeah, gambling it's a is sin. a sin. I mean, it's not. It's not like it's not. The Bible doesn't say sin. It's it, Tennessee gamble. will get a casino in the next five years. hundred percent. I mean, they. They should. It's great money. No, they will because they allow online betting now. Yeah, we they, we just recently, you yeah. know, Logan can't bet online still on uh, sports games. That's crazy because he's a professional athlete. No, he's literally not. <laughs> DraftKings, Barcel, no. Yeah, figure it out, please. My God, that's crazy. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, I think that because that came through, they're gonna build a casino here anytime, and they have one right at the tip top at Bristol. We have one like right over here in North Carolina too, like on yeah. the line. Yeah, ours yeah. is all the uh, ours, but the Bristol one is literally. I mean, Bristol, Virginia, Bristol, Tennessee, same fucking city, just same different thing. split states. Yeah, same thing. Yeah. So anyway, um, yeah, that's the Children of Lear. That one's good. Um, well, all right, guys. 
Okay, so we have one little surprise for you. So we were obsessed with our candy grapes. Yes. So we ordered a St. Patty's Day batch and we have, should we do the pickle? Yeah, I think we should. We have a pickle. Okay, if you guys are like geeking out over this, because like I know this some people are This going to be an like, ASMR Ugh. section, yeah. So we have a pickle, a candy pickle, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. And then we have pineapple and we have grapes. Yeah. So we're going to go get it and we'll be right back. Yeah, we're going to be right back. And then I, I was going to do another case for you guys, but like, I think we're good. We're good. You know, like, I don't want to, I don't want to like wring us all out dry just in case we couldn't have another, just in case we can have another mm-hmm. one. Plus, I'm feeling really buzzed. Yeah. So I need to take a sec. You need to chug yours. It's fucking water. It's just, it was too cold. It's just super cold water. Super cold. Super cold water. Jameson ginger and lime, as we do every single St. Pads. That's enough. All right, BRB. (laughs) We're going to start with. Let's show us what they have. Pick that one up too. These are candied pickles. And with this a, is also going to be on YouTube and TikTok and Reels. With a fruit roll up wrap. I'm pretty sure. We, we're we pretty sure. We can't tell for positive. This is pineapple and grapes. And it looks like we have some wrapped in cotton candy, some plain, and then some maybe in like sugar? sugar. I'm not really sure. Maybe Warhead, maybe Jolly Rancher. Um, from yeah, Taste please. Buds Knoxville Taste by Bud. Melissa. Taste Buds Knoxville by Melissa. We love her. Go get on her Facebook if you want to get some here locally. Okay. We're so excited. What first? I want to do a pineapple. First. Okay. Give me a pineapple in my jar, in my plate. Are okay, you ready? Yeah. Three, two, one. Oh. Oh my God. Oh. Mm-hmm. Get the pineapple. Get the pineapple. Get the pineapple. Green apple and pineapple top tier. I want a cotton candy grape. Yeah. You want cotton candy? I'm going to do a plain. This one has cotton candy on it. Okay. Okay, here we go. Oh, my God. These grapes... I need a cotton candy one. This one's huge. <laughs> is that even real? Co- Wait, is there a grape in Do here? Do we know what's on these yet? Not yet. Mm. Cotton candy grape. I think crushed. I can't tell what it is. I mean, I guess it looks like crushed Jolly Rancher, but it tastes so powdery that I want to say it's almost... I don't know. Sugar? I don't know. Okay. Okay. I'm scared for these. I'm scared as well. Here. These are the pickles. <laughs> no way. I don't know how we're about to do this. <laughs> I'm going to break a tooth on this. I mean, this thing is huge. Three. Cheers. Slancha. <laughs> Slancha. <laughs> Oh, mine's frozen. <laughs> Morgan. Mine's frozen. Here, eat this one. You're going to be obsessed. And you're not mentally prepared for this. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh my God. I never in a million years thought I'd like that. Me either. Except for we did. <laughs> we were like, we immediately need the nickel. What is that? I have no idea. They're so big. I love pickles. Mm. The pineapple's the best. Mm-hmm. For sure. Top here. Oh, yeah. And she made it all green for us. I know St. Patty's is our favorite. Let me tell you something. This shit, I'm obsessed. It's so good. It's so delicious. I'm sweet toothed out. But I will be snacking. It's her favorite part. Immediate ASMR. It's your besties. 
Tay Ann Moore again. That movie's super sour. Sour. That's what I think if we... Next time we get these, we have to do a warhead. Like, we need, like, sour mm-hmm. punch in it. Yeah. That would be so Everyone's good. so over these fucking taste we tests and stop. ASMRs. We can't stop. Can't stop, won't stop. And we won't stop. No, we won't. We really can't. Because this shit's too good. Taste Buds by Melissa in Knoxville. If you guys want to try in your local, get join her Facebook, Facebook. group right now. She, I don't think she ships. I don't believe so. I do know that y'all sold her out, so. <laughs> Literally. That was good. Good That shit. made me look. That made me feel good. <laughs> that felt real good. That made me feel really special. All right, everybody. Well, thanks so much for joining us for this episode of St. Patty's Day 4.0. <gasps> oh. Possibly our last not like obviously we're so really dramatic you fucking we're being so dramatic what are you talking about we just it, it came at a really bad time this year <laughs> it came every you know where it comes every year it's just <laughs> i feel like we should record this close yeah i think so too maybe it's just because we get to see ourselves uh, we like that because we're vain <laughs> vain we're vain bitches we're vain um i hope you guys enjoyed this saint patty's day episode next week will be a regular episode of groups and crimes maybe not maybe dark history of children's rhymes no nah. i think we should save that for right before the wedding okay because i'm disappointed i was hoping it was this week not yet <laughs> not yet we got 40 days 40 days love you guys love you guys thanks so much for joining us Sancho. i hope you guys had a great time if you guys have any irish lore stories that we haven't covered yet you should uh let us know. be safe out let there let us know and if you haven't already sent in that uh april creepy account we for have psychotic gotten dreams. so many a million of you guys have sent in dreams but we don't have the follow-ups that we've been searching for which were the stories for another time yes we bring them back those. Bring them back, bring them back, bring them back, bring them back, bring them back. All right, guys. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, I can't look at myself when I record. Bring them back, 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 bring them back. Okay. We're done. Love you, bye. Love you. Goodbye.